Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Fire Force Chapter 234. Um, we last left our heroes. We finished our little show mini arc, uh, delving into the birth of Shinra and Sho, how Shinra's birth is kind of an adolification of the Christ legend, uh, which is how the version birth happened there, which signifies Shinra as some kind of like destined hero a little bit. Sho's virgin birth is a little less, on less firm ground, but Sho has solidified his goal as a guardian angel for Shinra. Uh, and then we check back in with the 8th, and they're getting ready to start their fight to reclaim the Empire from the White Clad. So, all that being said, let's jump right on into Chapter 234, the 8th. And the question I have in rereading 233 just now is, does the 8th refer to Company 8? Or the Eighth Pillar, or both. It's probably both. Uh, our picture here is this really weird-looking thing. Uh, there's some kanji. I can't tell what it says, of course. Oh, here's the translation. The idea of explosive cataclysm. It's there within your mind. So maybe it's about how, like, Adola, the because of the idea of the cataclysm is what makes the cataclysm, maybe? I'm not sure. Which would explain, actually, there was a, there was a moment, um, maybe 10 or 20 chapters ago, uh, where, like, people on the street were, like, talking about the idea of of the world ending soon. And so maybe the White Cloud had, like, put that idea in people's head in order to make it come to pass, maybe? Possibly? Not quite sure. Uh, but anyway, we open uh, with the White Cloud, specifically Charon, uh, Sumire, and Fairy. Uh, and there's someone else there that might be, might be Yona, or it might be, like, a throne or something. In the shadows of the cataclysm, a plot progresses. And Fairy addresses the group. One pillar remaineth. What lay before hath been naught but prologue. And Sumire responds, Indeed, the cataclysm will merge this world with the collective unconscious of man. Uh, and so we see this uh, uh, quick little diagram, of, like everything we've kind of worked out over the past dozen chapters, of a bunch of people thinking in like a shared thought bubble, and the thought bubble is a dola. Um, which is a nice, nice succinct way of summarizing the past, like, ten chapters. <laughs> In short, it spells out the destruction of the world. Uh, and yeah, I think that might be Yona, but he looks very weird now. Um, I mean, may, like, the, the eye, the, the whole, like, he has, like, his eyes are, like, circled with an A in them, which is similar to Yona's eyes. The, sh the sh shape of his face is kind of... What we've been seeing Yona morph into for the past hundred chapters or so. It looks like a continuation of that development. So, which brings up the question, what the fuck is Yona? Like, like there's been the idea that, oh, he came from Adola, maybe he's a doppelganger of something. But doppelgangers generally, at the very least, look like the ideas that people have in their head of something. Um, and so what the fuck is Yona supposed to be? I don't know, but he speaks. And so we must guide the collective unconscious of man in the correct direction. As it, st as it stands, the end point of mankind's ideas equate to death. We cannot allow anyone to disrupt that thinking. So that's kind of the thing that uh, Hibana brought up around 2.30ish. That we didn't quite follow why the end point of mankind's ideas are death. Uh, maybe is that everyone is so fixated on their death that death has become the collective unconscious. I feel like... Someone had an explanation in the comments of that video, but I don't quite remember it. Um, I don't know. Uh, and so Charon turns to Haumea, who is apparently also there. Haumea, how does the collective unconscious look? Uh, she opens her mouth. There's nothing to worry about. In the end, all they see is death. The evangelist is pleased too. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm onto something with what I said. Uh, and so the four of them all look at, at Haumea, and we see two shining lights in the darkness that are probably eyes. Oh, yeah, it's Giovanni. I have not seen Giovanni in a long time. It kind of, like, slinks out, less human than ever. Just as insects fly toward flames, mankind marches toward death and destruction. The only difference between the two is a matter of scale. As it will be with this world as it will be with the universe. And we see in his, like, little eye goggle thing, uh, the like, shadows of a bunch of insects in there. Uh, and up on the surface, 
we see a rumble and like a a, a vision of Sumire, um, who has always had one of the creepiest character designs in this series. I will say, uh, there's just something ever so slightly unsettling about her that I really love. Um, and just then, it looks like the eighth pillar is rising from the water. Yeah, there it is. The eighth pillar is has risen. And a couple people are like on the side of the on the shore just looking at it. Another pillar. It's the earthquakes that are causing it. This one makes the eighth. What's gonna happen to the world now? So yeah, it looks like it looks like um the white clouds have kind of been insinuating this idea that eight pillars mean the end of the world. Because the only people who should know that are like the fire forces. And I'm pretty sure, especially given uh I mean you know, watch the anime, and the anime's got to the part where uh uh, Company 8 has to, like, clamp down on the revelation about the tabernacle uh, to stop a panic. So that seemed like the kind of thing that the... Like, this seemed like the kind of thing that the the, the, the church would put a, put a damper on. Um, though, admittedly, as they are now working with the white clads semi-openly, um, it's... They're no longer... They're now trying to start the panic rather than stop it. Uh, anyway, what's going to happen to the world now? Uh, and then another Titanic Inferno rises, of course, and they run away. It's, an, it's another Titan. Run for your life. Call the Fire Force. Uh, and just then, Company 2 arrives. The second is on the scene. Go join up with the fourth. Uh, and so, I don't know who's joining up with the fourth. Uh, but either way, Honda steps out. Is this the last pillar? Prepare the catapult. <laughs> Roger, here we go. One last Honda, Honda catapult. Get us a clear line of fire immediately. Uh, and so, Pan, uh, talks to, to Ogun and Kareem, I think, Kareem is his name, I think? Uh, no, Kareem is, Kareem is the first lieutenant, I think it might be Kareem. Uh, the other guy in Company 4, who I don't remember exactly. I, I don't remember his name, I mean. Leave the Titan to the second in Hyjima. Fui fweet, uh, we're here to evacuate civilians. Fui fweet, uh, and Ogun and Kareem, I think. Roger. Uh, and, uh, Conro turns to Oguro, who of course they've arrived. This is the last one. We can leave this to them this time, right? Uh, and Ogro stops him. You're almost done. Quit whining and do your job. You know, when the first pillar appeared, that was more than enough to shock me. But this? And we see um, the, the Soul Leader Moon above the pillar, which means it's nighttime, despite the fact that Okobo seems to hate drawing night skies because <laughs> it's a white sky. Uh, off Tama Bay, the eighth pillar an immense titan appears. And it looks to just be, like, a wheel or something? Um, and Fairy is just floating above the last pillar. Tis the duty of the Cataclysm Force that the Cataclysm may progress unhindered, to suppress the existence of the Savior, completely and utterly. And as we know now, the, the Savior is Shinra. And he, he doesn't seem to have been going after Shinra in particular too much. I don't really know... Unless the pillar's existence somehow suppresses the existence of this savior motif that Shinra has, has is like destined to fill. Hmm. Uh, but Kareem calls out to the evacuating civilians. Stay calm and follow our orders as you evacuate. Ah! It's a titan! Uh, and as one guy is running away, he infernalizes right then and there. Um and I've been theorizing, I think I, I think I mentioned this before. That in particular, the fear of infernalization leads to infernalization. Uh, and given the fear of like running for his life and seeing the infernal, that might be tied into it. Possibly. I don't know. Uh, but Kareem calls out, he combusted! And just then, all around him, all of the civilians are, or at least a lot of them, are all infernalizing. And they start attacking him. Uh, and he lands by Ogun. Kareem, you good? I let my guard down. My bad. You're saying that like it's an excuse. You shouldn't be letting your guard down in the first place. Which is why I said my bad. Uh, then Kareem gets back up. I'll stop him and buy us some time. I forget exactly what his powers are. Because uh, I don't think we've ever really seen him fight too much. Uh, but he seems to have set up... Uh, or someone has set up some kind of wall between the Infernals and uh, and Company 4. Um, and we see Pond blow his whistle. Everyone, I've got a heat-resisting buff on you. Come this way. You don't need to fear the flames. I think this might be the survivors he's talking to, maybe? Uh, if there are survivors, we can't really see any. Uh, and then Pon calls to Ogun. Ogun, give them their last rites. 
Yes, sir. You ready, Father Reese? Anytime. Uh, and so now here's a new character, I think, Father Reese, who I don't think we've heard of before. Uh, but I mean, it makes sense that Company 4 would have some religious figure, because uh, I think all the companies have at least one or two religious figures around. Uh, and so Reese prays, The flame is the soul's breath. The black smoke is the soul's release. Ashes as ashes. May thy soul, and Ogun joins in, of course, return to the great flame of fire. And he just goes ham on them all. Ah, uh, and the Honda catapult is ready! Super headbutt cannon primed. Honda missile loaded. We're waking up in the morning, opening the window, and bathing in the morning sun. So yeah, it seems like this, this, um, infernal is literally just a wheel. Uh, with some, like, what looks like little spikes, it might be sun rays, uh, and, like, the sticks that, like, a wheel on, like, a boat would have. Like, an old-timey, old-timey ship. Uh, which is, which is what kind of... The image it instills in me is that of, like, an old-timey ship wheel. Um, anyway. Going to work. Carrying out your duties and then getting back home to your family. And every night thinking, today was a good day. We need to make tomorrow that day. Tomorrow and every day after. Honda Missile. Super Killer Head Ram. Uh, and we have a note. The attack name is a reference to one of E. Honda's super attacks, a character from Street Fighter 2. Uh, I'm sure someone in the audience gets that. Uh, but I've never played Street Fighters. So I don't know. Anyway. Dosukoi! And he, sh he is yeah, good set flying towards the center of the of the wheel. There's a little star in the center of the wheel. I'm not entirely sure how physical that star is. Um, uh, and so Juggernaut watches. The Titan's gonna die and the pillar will turn black. But what in the world is going to happen after that? Uh, and Honda yells out, I'm giving the Empire that tomorrow! Um, and he hits the center of the wheel and just bounces off with a boink as everyone just watches in, like, stunned silence. A misfire followed by silence. To be continued after 235, The Savior. Um, there's another, another picture here that looks like fan art and an ad for volume 25, whatever. Uh, okay. So, there's not a whole lot of... Once you get past the first third of the chapter, there's not really a whole lot to dig into here. Um, and I kind of discussed most of what I had to talk about in the first third. There's what, whatever the fuck is going on with Yona's body. I don't know. It has never been discussed. Like, I, I've kind of been a little curious, as his, he was initially drawn human-looking, and then when we see him um, around the Saul Temple arc or so, he starts to look kind of weird, but still, you know, humanoid. And now he's this. The, the tail? The tail reminds me of, like, for some reason I'm thinking of, like, Fluffy or Ampharos in Pokemon, specifically with the shape of the head. That's the vibe it gives off. <laughs> And I honestly have no idea what Yona is supposed to be right now. I don't have a single clue what Yona, what the deal with Yona is. Uh, he's just so monstrous. I, 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 I don't know. I have not a single clue <laughs> what he's supposed to be right now. Uh, though, I mean, I'm confident enough in Fire Force's storytelling that we will get answers to Yona. This isn't really a criticism. It's just a statement. I don't know. I, 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 I I got nothing. I got nothing on the Yona train. Um, but anyway, then we move into... We have this image of Sumirite also on page 7. Um, and I don't... Like, is Sumire specifically raising the pillars? Is that what's happening? Because... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So, like, if it were the 7th pillar... Because we know that Sumire is the 7th pillar... That might track a little bit, but it's the eighth pillar. Um, unless the implication is that the white clads have always been manually raising the pillars, but if that's the case, why not just raise them all at once? I'm not sure. Um, but this does seem to be this chapter does kind of seem to, seem to really be the beginning of the end. Uh, it's both the final pillar, which signals the cataclysm, which signals the end of the world, of course. Um, we get this line from from Fairy, what lay before hath been naught but prologue. Um, and then we have, you know, the final Titanic Infernal, which Honda can't beat with the Honda Missile. Honda Missile fails. 
Never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, we see more and more people infernalizing. Uh, and we don't see any survivors here. So, but we also don't, like, no one says everyone was infernalized. So I'm not entirely sure if there are survivors in the refugees or if they are all infernals now. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe next chapter we'll, we'll elaborate that. Um, but I, I imagine, given the title is The Savior and all of the show's work to, to put Shinra into that savior, um, that savior role, uh, implies that next chapter is when the Eighth will join the fight. Uh, they will arrive... Shinra will fight Fairy, maybe, because Fairy is very, like, it's my job to, to stop the Savior. Um, that's kind of my guess guess as to where, where we're going from here. Uh, but yeah, honestly, once you get to the actual fight, there's not really a whole lot to, to break down. It's very kind of, here's the plot, let's start fighting. Let's deal with the final Infernal, final Titanic Infernal, and then let's see how the world shakes out from this. Um, we'll have to wait till next week to see how the world jigs out from this. So I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe or, you know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And remember, your life is your own, okay? Bye!